<clears throat> All right, so what is the educational importance of the HPE learning area? So obviously it's it's always difficult when you know when defining defining what people are going to learn. Um, trying to say like what's good and what's bad, but I think that I think that health is it's one of those it's one of those things where it's pretty easy, it's pretty I feel pretty comfortable saying that we want children to be healthy as opposed to being unhealthy. We want human beings to, to be healthy in their lives. So um, what, what I find interesting is that is that kids and uh, kids are generally born you know really healthy. Um, like the same with the, with the PE side of it. Kids are generally born you know really active, really mobile. Um, you only have to, you only have to look at say a, say a toddler um, picking up a picking up anything off the ground and, and you can see that they're doing like a, a perfect squat. Um, so what so what you have to think is you know is that our lifestyles now in the 21st century are kind of in many in many respects you know detri detrimental towards our health. Um, we see heaps of problems from you know obesity to heart disease to to even things like cancer which is just all on the rise all these all these illnesses and these unhealthy things which are on the rise in society so i think that it's just it's so important for kids growing up today going through school to learn about to learn about how to be healthy about how to do things right because and because there's so many things which which like which is conflicting which is out there um so like I know that there's just and a lot of it's just about making money really. So there's there's so many things about you know sort of trying to sell vitamins, trying to sell health health diets and and exercises and you know whatever. There's just there's so much thing, so many things out there, you know, which claim to be health and and all, and all that. But but yeah, it's kind of more about actually making the money um, as opposed to actually being healthy for the people. So I think it's, it's it's another reason why kids just have to be you know be able to actually be become like critical of some of the things that are actually out there. Um, and in terms of PE, um, growing up PE was about was about sport a lot for me. Um, I grew up playing sports and you know I developed friends and, and like connections with community with my community and stuff through sport, which I, I loved. And sport is obviously a great aspect of, of PE, but there's there's also there's there's more to um, PE now which you know I'm learning and I've been obviously learning for like for years now. Um, there's there's so much more to PE than just sport. So there are the vast array of of open-ended games and activities that, that bring new ideas to to students. Um, I also I also find the ideas around creative PE um, that to be just to be really exciting they can, as they can bring new um, and interesting things in terms of physical education for students. All right, so what are some considerations when selecting and using a health education resource in your teaching? So obviously, number one, um, students in the class. Uh, teachers teachers should try to pick health education resources that are, that are inclusive of all of the students in our classes. Um, there are a lot of diverse learning needs from individual students. And obviously, each child is different, so it's important to, to provide as many opportunities as possible for students to thrive. Um, it's also about being being sensitive to students as well, for like for the for the many different reasons that students are different. They will have their different the different aspects that they bring to the classroom. Uh, this obviously relates to the ATSL standards um, of knowing students and how they learn. Um, the other thing is that it also has to, some, another consideration is it also has to reflect the, the curriculum for the specific areas, obviously. Um, so if we're teaching Year 3, 3PE, three we're obviously going to have to relate it to the curriculum in that, in that respect. Um, it also has to be relevant to the students' lives. Um, so obviously we're going we're to talk about issues that are going to be, that could possibly um, arise in their lives. So we wouldn't focus on something like malaria, because obviously that's not in, in Australia. Um, or in depth anyway. Um, there's also there's also a lot of conflicting and or outdated material, so it's important that the resources that we use are 
up to date and scientifically based and peer reviewed um, for the students so they're provided with the best quality um, material. Uh, it's, also, it's also about as a teacher knowing the content. So my, my specialties are, are maths and science. Um, however, I've I've taken a lot from this unit on how to actually teach health and PE. However, health education is is centered around you know, students' lives and obviously maths and science teachers are still required to to help students and to guide them in their learning because they're obviously going to be confronted with many things throughout their life. Um, so some students I will relate with really well, others, you know, maybe I won't so well, but so I, I need to be prepared with, you know, a content base as well as, you know, emotionally being able to connect with students um, to guide them through their, through their lives. All right, so how do students learn in, about and through movement? So we'll start with through. So learning through movement, there, there are so many things that, that, that can be learnt through actually doing movement. So, so you learn physically, um, obviously, obviously physically is the ones that come up first. Um, we learn the motor skills, you know, balance, strength, endurance, but, but there's also the sort of emotional, intellectual and social aspects of, of that gets developed through individuals um, participating in physical activities. Um, and this can actually relate to, you know, teaching in general, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a chemistry teacher, so one of the things that I like to do is a bit like getting a bit of embodiment in the chemistry class, so a bit of movement in the class. So when so when we learn when we learn about cis and trans isomers, I teach them. You know, cis, everyone puts their hands up, and then we do trans. So it's it's just it's just a simple way of just of actually getting the students, you know, moving and a bit of embodiment. Uh, the next one is learning about movement. So this is more about learning about the theoretical body of knowledge related to movement. So this comes in a wide a wide range of areas that students can can look at to learn about movement. So it touches on the sub disciplines like uh, like anatomy, exercise physiology, biomechanics, sociology, and philosophy, and you know the, all the all those theoretical bodies bodies of knowledge that are out there. Um, and obviously, these are all interconnected into movement. Um, and finally, there is learning in movement. So this is one of the the lesser understood aspects of the Arnoldian dimensions. Um, so learning in movement is concerned with movement activities being in and of themselves worth a while. So this goes a little bit deeper into the philosophical aspects of valuing movement. So the thing I like, well, the way I like to look at it is so when people walk away from say a football game or a soccer match, you know, they have this sort of deep feeling of of being content. So movement can actually allow us to to actualize oneself, you know, like to find a bit of to find a bit of meaning. So as as human beings, we can we can often struggle to find a sense of meaning with our lives. Um, I think that we're finding now, you know, hence the the mindfulness movements and and you know, it's also something that's it's been known to to many ancient to many ancient teachings that a big part of being alive is about being in the present moment. Um, obviously, when we're sitting still, our minds wonder, you know, to worry about the past and the future. So a lot of you know meditation or training is required to bring our consciousness to the present moment. But movement is that is that that one thing that gives us gives us a medium. So, for example, if I was to do yoga or to go for a surf, you know, I, you, you forget about everything that you're doing and you just focus on on being on really just being present. So, learning in movement focuses on movement activities that can be participated in for for intrinsic reasons. How does your unit de plan development demonstrate your proficiency or developing proficiency in two of the graduate Australian professional stands for teachers? So first I'll be looking at uh, standard two, which is no students and how they learn. So I think that the structure of our unit and the quality of our lessons demonstrates that we understand the content and how to teach it. Uh, more specifically, I would like to touch on standard 2.4, which, which is about providing opportunities for learners to develop understandings of and respect for Aboriginal and, in, and Torres Strait Islanders' um, histories, cultures, and languages. So, in our unit, the students will be playing um, the game Born a Jerky, which is an Indigenous game that, that kids would play to develop their hunting skills. So, it's similar to dodgeball, but but we'll be playing it and describing it with sort of that Indigenous lens, which the kids get to explore. 
So it's important, it's important to look positively in, at Indigenous culture, um, you know, something that would make Indigenous students in our class feel, feel proud to be a part of the culture that they, that they are a part of. Um, and, and it's sport, it's fun, you know, it allows the kids to get, to get creative with Indigenous culture. Uh, the next standard that I'll quickly touch on is standard three, which is plan for and implement effective teaching and learning. So obviously some of these, you know, we can't show our proficiency with as we haven't actually delivered this unit yet. However, I, I think that um, it can be seen that out through the overall unit that we are able to plan, structure and sequence lesson programs. Um, also more specifically um, with the standard 3.4, which is select and use resources, we have used a range of different resources um, from, from more standard PE lessons um, to showing to having a literacy focus um, with our puddle poem and also the indigenous focus that I spoke about earlier.